everyone, and welcome back to our general session track. Next up, we have a session titled The Only Thing Artificial at Chipotle is Our AI, coming from Timothy Park, Director Marketing Analytics at Chipotle Mexican Grill. Tim brings an enormous depth of data science experience, having worked in industries ranging from rocket science to Hollywood. He's currently responsible for supercharging the Chipotle loyalty program to optimize marketing communication and increase customer lifetime values. Tim focuses on data storytelling and objective analysis to strengthen corporate relationships. At Sony Entertainment, he spearheaded innovative data initiatives to bridge the gap between business needs and siloed systems. Before Sony, Tim formed DirecTV AT&T Entertainment Group's analytics department, where he helped lay the foundation for a data-driven center of excellence. He also worked as a statistician at the Aerospace Corporation, an R&D center that provides technical leadership to the DOD, National Reconnaissance Office, and Missile Defense Agency on all aspects of satellite missions. Please join me in welcoming Tim to the stage. Well, hello and welcome. My name is Tim Park, and I'm honored and grateful for this opportunity. Uh, thank you to AI4 and all of you for joining us today. Uh, but before I begin, I just need to say that I'm here simply representing myself and my perspectives are in today's presentation and by no means am I re representing Chipotle. Uh, so what will we, will we cover today? Uh, I, I wanna start off by briefly covering what AI is and how it relates to machine learning and deep learning. Uh, then I'll go over some AI applications in the restaurant industry. And last but certainly not least, I wanna talk about the proliferation of AI and, and what are some growing ethical concerns. So what exactly is AI and is it new? And can I use AI interchangeably with machine learning and deep learning? So let's, let's just jump into that. So according to Wikipedia, AI is simply bringing the intelligence to objects. So it's the broad concept of developing machines that can simulate human thinking, reasoning, and behavior. Now, with regards to AI being new, the idea of actually bringing um, intelligence to objects is definitely not new, and it's been around for over 2,000 years. Uh, ancient Greek philosophers would talk about automated reasoning, but they could theorize about it, but they could actually never implement it. Uh, if we go back to about 100 years to 1920s, the idea of driverless vehicles were introduced, and these, these vehicles were called phantom autos, and the these events drew thousands of people uh, across the US as they were so intrigued. Um, and Arthur Samuel, um, he developed the first AI program to run in the US, and it was for the game of checkers. And he built it off the first commercial, commercial computer, the IBM 701. And just by this event, it caused the IBM stock price to jump 15 points overnight. And he also modernized the term machine learning back in 1959. So here's a nice visual, I believe, to kind of summarize what AI, machine learning, and deep learning are. So we know that AI, it, it replicates the human, human, human mind, and there's a range of wide applications, right? Such as uh, computer games, checkers, chess, backgammon, to voice assistants that we're familiar with as Alexa and Siri, medical diagnosis, to robots such as the uh, Mars Explorer, and all the way to what I call really advanced AI, the Microsoft WeWalk, which is a, a cane for the visually impaired. So those are just some awesome applications of AI. And we can think of machine learning as a subset of AI. And these are the techniques, AI techniques that helps the computer to actually do the deep learning. And so under machine learning, you have your unsupervised, your supervised, you name it, right? And these are all your algorithms, such as basic as linear regression, all the way up to k-means clustering, to principal components analysis, you name it. They're all considered under the machine learning umbrella. And then deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which takes the computation of multi-layer neural networks. And the key term here is artificial neural networks. So once again, deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which is a subset of AI. I think that's a simple way to remember these three terms. So what are some AI applications in the restaurants today? And I wanna cover how we interact with customer relationships, how we manage our inventory, and what are some possible future opportunities that exist in the restaurant industry? So think about back in the day, and I'll start with this famous quote, 
by John Wanamaker, who was considered to be the pioneer in marketing. Half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. And this is way back uh, over 100 years ago. And think back to the, the famous punch cards that many of us used to have for our favorite restaurant. You go X number of times, you get something for free. And then there were companies, a lot of us, we were doing the kind of spray and pray approach, right? Where we would just blast emails out or billboards and we just hope and pray that the, me the message would resonate with our audience. Now with AI, we can really target and, and segment who, who gets what message. And based on previous purchases and viewing habits or whatnot, we can see how we can customize our messaging. We can take our customers into specific journeys based on previous purchases and make sure we get offers that are relevant to our customers. So at Chipotle, right, we have our app and we have 27 million loyalty rewards members. If you're not, please sign up because uh, you get special perks, you get free food. And what we want to do is message our customers. So, for example, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, we don't want to blast you with a notification saying, hey, we just launched our smoked brisket or we're just launching pollo asado. We want to instead tell you, hey, we have our plant based chorizo coming out. Similarly, for our meat lovers, we want to say, hey, plant based chorizo actually tastes like tastes like meat. So give it a shot, right? It's a healthier lifestyle and try something new in the first year. So we can definitely customize our messaging now with AI. When it comes to dealing with customer service, think about back in the day, if you had a complaint, you would have to literally write a letter, snail mail it. There was also, for some of you, there was a thing called a fax machine and you could actually send in your, your complaint that way. You could always dial in a, possibly a 1-800 number, and of course, then email came along as well. So these are all different ways to interact with, 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 the, uh, with the brand. And now with uh, AI at Chipotle, we have an automated assistant called Pepper, and we use a technology called Natural Language Processing, NLP, and we use these text-based chatbots where you could uh, put in your complaints, your orders, et cetera. In fact, you can order directly from Facebook uh, using our Pepper app. What this does is it frees up our human agents to concentrate on those more complex cases that would, re would require human input and some of the more repetitive mundane requests can be automated using our chatbot. Now, when it comes to ingredients, um, we can actually now trace and improve our inventory systems. Uh, without AI, think about someone having to manually go in and keep track of what we have, when's it gonna go bad, how much of it do we have? And we use basic spreadsheets and software tools. At Chipotle, we're actually now testing a, um, a radio frequency ID called RFID, and we're using it to enhance our traceability and inventory systems. So you imagine being able to scan, a, if a supplier signs into the program, the food is scanned as it leaves their premises, it arrives at the distribution center, scanned again, it's uh, uh, individual restaurants, it's scanned again, and imagine the possibilities of not running out of ingredients, reducing food waste, and the time savings and efficiency for our employees. Um, another opportunity lies with food, food prep. Um, for Think about our chips, for example, what, what's done manually. Um, we are in the middle of testing a robot named Chippy, which is our AI kitchen assistant, and it's being tested to see if what Chippy can make, can it replicate the flavor, texture, and crunch of our popular chips, right? And in our innovation hub, we will be testing to see if there's a difference between tortilla chips made by humans versus a robotic arm. Another opportunity lies with a supply chain. And so AI has the potential to really improve agriculture with the internet of things enabled sensors or drones. You can provide real-time data for algorithms to increase agricultural efficiencies, to improve crop yields and reduce food, pro food production costs. Then if we move further along the supply chain, uh, imagine self-driving trucks at some point coming along and this would help ease the strain on the truck driver shortage that we currently face across the nation for all industries, as well as make deliveries more efficient. Uh, the last section I wanted to talk about is ethical concerns with AI. So we know there are all these amazing applications and enhancements that AI brings, but I believe it's also important to discuss some of the ethical concerns surrounding AI. Um, 
We'll talk about some of the overhyping capabilities, liability, biases, and power and control. So for all of you who constantly receive cold calls from AI software vendors, uh, just be careful as there are many cases where they could possibly oversell and underdeliver. And just keep in mind that even a basic linear regression formula is technically considered machine learning and which we know is a subset of AI. So a simple linear regression in Excel um, is something that you can do and you don't, you don't need uh, a, a software vendor for that. So just be careful. Um, when, you, um, when you vet your vendors. When it comes to liability, it's another growing area within AI. It's, it's a gray area for sure. So earlier this year, a driver of a Tesla that was on autopilot ran a red light and killed two people in California. And the prosecutors have now filed two counts of vehicular manslaughter. But in other states, laws deem that the autopilot system is technically the driver so the manufacturer must assume fault for any collisions that are caused by its automated driving system. So you can imagine the possibilities with liability issues going forward with AI. The elephant in the room with AI, of course, is will robots take over my job? And to be frank, there will be jobs that robots will take over and they already have. Think about the assembly line and cars. Uh, think about uh, toll booths, right? Um, or parking lot operators at, at your local mall where you no longer have an attendant, you can just stick your ticket in. Um, but let's face it, people are not rushing to spend eight hours in, for example, a toll booth or to flip burgers, right? And so the robot could possibly take over some of these mundane jobs and AI could possibly create millions of other jobs that, we, that haven't even been invented yet. So just something to keep in mind as well. Now, we also know that there is bias and prejudice with with machines. And one example I want to talk, talk about is this thing called sentiment analysis. Often as, as customers, we want as, as companies, we want to know, are people responding positively or negative, negatively to my latest campaign, food offer, movie, whatever it could be. And the problem though, is when people write, uh, apply sarcasm, um, or, for example, if someone says, I love when customers cough in my face, we know that's sarcasm, but does the machine know to decipher that as a negative sentiment rather than a positive one, right? Um, I love being ignored, right? These are just examples. And how about with misspellings or words that have double meanings? How will the machine know to interpret that correctly? Um, for example, dessert versus desert, right? If they misspell it, how would, the, how would we categorize that? Um, here's an example. What if someone said that was a freaking bad burrito, uh, meaning bad in a good sense? Um, how do we know? How do we know how to categorize that as a positive? And so we see that there's going to be a lot of coding with specialized rules that will be necessary. Um, we're all familiar with the phrase garbage in, garbage out. And I believe AI has amplified this concept. And so before any analysis is performed, just remember to review your assumptions check your data and share them with your stakeholders and make sure you review your results as you get your machine learning results to say, are there anything in here that's possibly skewing my results? Because we know that there are underlying, underlying human biases and systemic biases that do exist. Uh, a few years back, Amazon was using AI to review resumes for their job applicants. And they found that anytime the the resume included the word women, it was marking these resumes down on their scoring system. So in effect, Amazon's system was teaching itself that male candidates were preferable and AI was, was, was feeding this, this, this incorrect sexist hiring. And so in 2018, they finally scrapped that. Facial recognition, we know, is another controversial area. And in 2019, a federal study confirmed that the racial bias of ra racial, of facial recognition systems. African-Americans and Asians were up to 100 times more likely to be misidentified compared to white men. And Native Americans and indigenous peoples had the highest false positive rate of all ethnicities, once again, due to bad underlying data. Uh, one last area that I'd like to touch upon is the idea of power and control behind AI. Now, Elon Musk often referred to an and admired for being a visionary leader in our day, and he even wants to colonize Mars. But he, even he has expressed concern over AI. 
basically, if AI continues to advance as rapidly, who is going to oversee AI and lay the rules? So just another thing to consider. So in summary, I just want to uh, wrap up and remind us that AI, right, is the ability of a computer machine to think and learn like a human being. And although AI is not new, deep learning has grown tremendously this past decade. And machine learning is a subset of AI, and direct learning is machine learning applied to large, large data sets and is automated. We also discussed some applications in the restaurant industry, such as how to personalize our customer relationship, uh, improve our customer service, improve our in inventory management, and possibly automate food prep. And we discussed potential future opportunities as well. And lastly, we just touched upon some of the ethical concerns that exist and continue to grow within AI. So just something to consider as you expand your growth of AI and your businesses. And with that, I just wanna say thank you for your time today. And I wish you all the best as you apply AI to your workplace. And when you and your family are hungry for some real food, don't forget about Chipotle. And thank you once again for your time. Thank you, Tim. What a great session. That's it for today's general session content. We hope you enjoyed the session so far and we will see you at our track session beginning soon. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.